Mitt kod blev Master på Faceit. Kanske får möta Totten någon gång i uh, FPL, kanske i framtiden. Precis, så so, uh-huh. keep on rocking. Ja, uh-huh. tack. The story behind that video was that I was playing Faceit. I just got to Master in Faceit and uh, my friend Michael, that's in the video, talking to Get Right. He saw that Get Right and I don't know, it was Get Right at least, uh, visiting a, a media mark. And then like, uh, out of nowhere, he just sent me that video. And uh, I, I just got really happy, because as I said, I've always looked up to Get Right, so it was really fun to hear him say my name. And then I actually showed him uh, the video as well, and he just laughed. <laughs> to drop out of school, it was something that I've had on my mind for like over a year. Uh, when I started in high school, I always thought that someday I will probably have to drop out of school to pursue my dreams in CSGO. And when NIP reached out to me that they wanted to have me, that's when I knew I had to take a decision to drop out of school. And uh, it was pretty hard in the beginning because now I don't meet my friends as often as before because they go to school and I'm traveling a lot. So that was probably like the hardest for me to like not getting to see my friends as often. Yeah, it was it was hard to just not see my friends as often. That was probably the only thing that was hard with dropping out of school. I think I was the most positive person in the house for him dropping school for a while because I understand what what it means to be a professional player. He, he won't have any time for go to school. I mean, he's barely home. We decided it's the best. So we asked him if he wanted them. He said yes, of course, because otherwise he couldn't play in, in, in the NIP. NIP has been the, the, the team of his dreams since he was a little kid, so it would work. My classmates have always been supporting me and now they're still supporting me. They're watching me play on the bigger stage. Now they're watching my games, they're like writing to me and supporting me every day. Give up! The map is overpassed, and that's where we're going to find ourselves in this first best of three between these two teams. We'll be uh, kicking over to the commentators right about now. We're going to go right into it here. Corsair Direct Masters, it's Navi and NIP, and winner goes to go to the semi final, loser to the quarterfinals. Rez goes down and twists. Oh, he's. He's not happy about this, surely. Yeah, they're gonna come check him. He actually gets a kill and even oh takes down Gumich. I can't believe it. He can still stay in this corner. That's kind of dangerous if they don't check it. They will get the kill, but they're not looking for it. They thought that was already burned out. And they are not gonna stand a chance here. And eight seconds left. Simple as to decide if he wants to try and take one gun away, try and die before the time is out, because it doesn't look like he's close enough to save. Maybe he wanted the AWP. He's not even gonna get that chance. Triple kill for Plopsky on the defense. One versus five here for the last ninja in every way. 15 seconds on the clock and um, this first map working out very well for Navi. We didn't really have that much time to practice all the maps and we thought we were really good on our pass already, so we didn't really put in enough time on it that we should have. So as well as Twist, he creates a new adaptive like a game plan on T side because he's upper, so it was pretty new to us. I think we just had double like finding our flow with it because we need to learn how to play with him more and I think we just need to put more practice into the map with him. Map number two is going to be on Inferno here between Navi and NIP. Bit of a chance but Flamey is able to crouch under and he follows it up and that will that'll be the end of the story over at Banana. Retreat to help Lecro, and he's gonna have to try it again. He's gonna have to come through this smoke and stop the plant. They're looking for it intently. Plopsky stabs him right through, and they're gonna win off it again. He's done it twice. Plopsky delivering down the stretch in this map. Twist 
they are all around him here. He's gonna go for a great double spray, but Guardian taking down Forest and 25 seconds here. Out of bullets and Rez showing up at a perfect time to help out and Guardian will fall. Twist with a triple kill. The backup was there exactly when it had to be or they were gonna definitely lose that round. Do this walking into a crossfire, a smoke or anything would have been necessary, I think, to make this work. He's gonna go down to Flamey. Inferno was probably the toughest map. It was really rough to experience it. <laughs> I think we read them pretty well, uh, but we didn't really react on it that much. They used the SGs really well. You can't really take a duel against it that good, so they shot us pretty hard on the T side. I'm gonna be honest to say that I didn't notice Guardian that much. I noticed Boomish more. He is the one that is gonna open up the map for them and that's gonna make the big change for pace for them. He did really well actually. He surprised us a lot in all the maps and he's growing into a role that he's getting more comfortable with. I think he's pretty new to in-game leading, but I think he's doing it really well. On tournament days, what's important for me is to have a good breakfast because I think that breakfast is like the most important meal of the day and uh, to sleep well as well, at least seven to eight hours even though it's pretty hard sometimes and then just warming up before the game, playing deathmatch or whatever. That's like my routines before uh, game day. I don't think I have any like special pre-game rituals that's different from other players. Uh, I usually just play deathmatch or aimbots before a game, like maybe 30 minutes to one hour, and then I'm warmed up. I think Nico needs to work on uh, just taking in the whole atmosphere and not being so nervous. I know it's something that will go away, but the faster, the better for him as well. Otherwise, I think he handles himself very good. Calm, he's skilled, he knows what he's doing. Get rid of that nervousness and uh, He's good to go. In the first roster shuffle for me is that I took some strategies with me from previous teams, like when I played with Gods and the Fnatic. You have to like pick and choose because when you play other teams, they're gonna have to have seen these runs already before. So you have to be kind of picky with what you steal and stuff like that. But I think it's normal in CS that you steal from Astralis, Liquid, runs like this all the time. It's happening a lot. When I traveled to DreamHack Masters 2016 to watch my first event when the NIP won, uh, that's like when I realized that I wanted to be a professional player. To I wanted to do what they were doing. It means a lot to me playing against Fnatic. It's a rivalry and I think it's fun to have between Swedish teams and I think every time we play it's more emotions that get into the game and I think I like that aspect and everyone's getting more hype and stuff like that. I just want him to have fun and to do what he loves because Counter-Strike is what he loves to do and of course to, to win some big tournaments. I love the story that NIP is bringing to the arena this weekend. I love how, where Plopski is being, but I have to put my vote with Fnatic. I think these guys are looking very sharp this weekend. Um, so I'm going with Fnatic. If I had to choose, which I guess I have to, I'd yes, also go with Fnatic. I do think it's going to be a close matchup. There's something to be said about having two domestic teams going up against each other. This is so much more than just any usual quarterfinal. It's two iconic organizations once again on the big stage on home soil, looking to prove who will be the next king of Sweden at this stage. They're two huge names, Alex, and it's unclear as to who will win both with few fresh lineups. Looking sharp, they've taken down some good opposition on their way, and both playing fantastic counter strike. It really is going to be a bit of an anomaly, though. No one knows what to expect. We expected to beat them. 
and I think uh, they expected the same against us. It was like, uh, you know how good you can be both teams, and we didn't really show up in the first game. If we came off uh, a bit harder in the beginning, I think we could have won that. Here comes the final play. Ball towards me. They're walking into the Lions den, though. Where's the well, uh, potential? One by one. It will be too easy for him. They want to telegraph their intentions. It will be in the commitment. How has Morris hit that shot? Rez looking to go, pushing, and that's a big through it. Big frag. Holding the cross. Oh, and another perfect shot from Rez. Damage from Twist. Doesn't even matter when he's hitting the headshots like that. Suppressing fire from Golden, but it's nothing. An NIP, a necessary round off the back of their star. Rez, that's the sign. He's got to be good here. Finds the angle, but doesn't find the frag. That's Electro and it's flushed with Mac 10. Both challenges towards the doors right now. They smoke towards the tunnels. Crims with a clinical shot towards the double doors. That should be enough as he inflicts so much damage towards Rez. He's got no choice but to get the hell out of there. It's going to be map point for Fnatic at this stage, and surely he does not survive. I think the main issue was uh, early in the game where we could have established a lead and uh, like breaking through. But even in the later rounds, we made like three mistakes in three rounds in a row. When I hold, held V and the three pushed me, and I think we won that round and almost broke them. Then we lost an anti eco. <laughs> I didn't expect us to play Nuke mostly, that's why I was excited about it, because we decided to fault Vertigo, which we haven't played a lot. I don't think they knew that, or they were just scared that we would just randomly pick it, so we were really satisfied with the pick. Play around it from the box, Brolin wouldn't take this fight in the open, he doesn't necessarily have the support of his teammates, and a combination of Twist and Lecro enables him to find the first, quickly traded, JW applying the pressure into the inner side. <laughs> Twist is looking absolutely oh. deadly with this kill now as they find kill after kill. The force by working out for an IP and be Twist to close things out there. Eliminated. Where do you go from here? Certainly not towards Twist. Let's go. The Golden's advance. He continues. Here's players that possibly above him though. He's going to catch not only that, but the bomb expecting another. He's the oh. Twist! And I shout! We're just comfortable on Nuke, and that's uh, why we play well on it. I kind of found some holes in their uh, CT positions, and we abused it a lot. It didn't work in the later rounds, but uh, well, in the beginning, when they had like several places to abuse, we did it, and we kept doing it, and it was working. We have always time. We have no time when we call it every day, also on Pycon. We don't have time. We clear it even then. It's just sitting in the back of the head that we clear it. Även om Jonas är lång, vi har ju snokat toa, vi kall, du kallar ju också, vi har inte klärt i toa, det är ingen som klärar. Alltså vi måste bara ta den marken så kommer det bli så mycket mer bekvämt. Mm. Och gibba. När vi ska köra A det vill säga. Alltså att vi har klärat den marken. All right, cool. that's it for me. Crims. Feeling overwhelmed here, we'll have to find the first. Takes down the bomb, buys some time to Forrest has surely trade him out here, but no, Crims gets two. 20 seconds remaining, they know exactly where Lecro is here. He's already been tagged down to 66 points of health, and now has to try and get a plant and two frags here. Models off to try and make things uncomfortable for the CT side, but how does he even get close to this one? Taking more and more damage, one more bottle will, will do it, and there it is, Crims to finish things off. Lecro responsible to stop the rotate from connector. And it's perfect. Can he get the second? He can! NIP! Oh, they've oh. got some staying power. He's got some stopping power. Yeah. NIP on this T side. 
goes back towards Montier, trying to fake rooms in. Golden Wicket the first. Holds strong in position, gets a second as well. Bomb goes down, now called the rotations, just mowing them down one by one. It looks like Fnatic has done enough here. Broski will answer back, but he stepped in. It's such a difficult situation. 23 HP, and we're all done. It's going to be Fnatic making their way towards the semi-finals here. They won a lot of individual duels. I think uh, we should have taken a bit more slow in our T approach. We met them halfway a few times and they got a few free entries, but uh, as CT we should have uh, played more defensively or more aggressively, like chosen what to do, not in the middle ground. So I think that's why we lost a lot of CT rounds. Obviously it was a really it was a fun game against Fnatic. It tends to be like this when we meet them. And it's been a while now since we beat them, actually. So I think it's tough because I always I want to end it against them. I really want their revenge, but this time they got it again. So we can beat them if we get enough practice with Twist. My expectations were a bit higher than this, I would say. I really thought that this time that this would be it. Quarterfinals is good. It just not, doesn't necessarily feel good. I just, I just wanted to go further to play against uh, bigger names, I guess. I just want to compete against the bigger names, so I'm not uh, disappointed either. My biggest achievement as a pro was uh, either ESL Cologne or now DreamHack Masters uh, because that's when we got to quarterfinals in both of the tournaments and I got to play in front of two amazing crowds. In Cologne it was super amazing to play in front of that crowd. It was my first uh, like big tournament uh, so that was one of the best experiences and now in Malmö uh, it was probably my best experience ever because I got to play in front of the Swedish crowd which has always been my dream ever since I watched NIP uh, play at DreamHack 2016. I, th I think he, he has no limit. He's, I don't say this because he's my son, but I think he's an unbelievable good player. And uh, in one or two years he, he will be even better and uh, I think he will be in everybody's lips. I would really like to just get the feeling of winning a big tournament. I would also like to play a major as I've never played it before. Yeah, those are my goals for moving on 2019 to 2020. He has a good path layout for him. Uh, I think uh, everything here is just going to be uh, working hard. And uh, I definitely could see him pop into the top 20. I don't see that as an impossibility. Uh, he definitely has the skill for it and now it comes down to hard work but top 20 player or a very stable player and definitely a lot of trophies under his belt. I see a lot to myself in him when he have finished his development you could say. I think we will be really equal him and I. Uh, we have similar strength and we're good at the same stuff pretty much.